1993 Chevy Z28 Camaro and it spent the last 10 years, the entire 2010s, sitting in a garage under a tarp. And I had the honor of spending a completely illogical amount of money to revive it. And it is happy to be alive again, let me tell you. <laughs> There's not many nice ones left like this. This thing really was under a tarp, had cobwebs all over it, but it was so well preserved. It was in a dry space, he even waxed it before he put the cover on top of it. And when you got in here, it was like an archaeological discovery from the mid-2000s. There was a parking pass in here from, say, when I was going to Wichita State University way back 15 years ago. And in the glove box, there is a MapQuest directions from somewhere in Michigan to somewhere in South Bend, Indiana. No phones with the GPS back in the early mid-2000s. And then there were mixed CDs. On those CDs that I listened to, it was mostly Nickelback and John Mayer. The not very good but anyway the guy really did preserve this car it truly was one of those examples where the guy just drove it parked it and then quit driving it and eventually it quit running so it was a total honor to be the guy to get this thing out of the garage get it going again be the first one to drive it in a new decade even though it cost way too much money and in this two weeks since that I've got this car running I've discovered why people love these things even though they are they're kind of junky but, but they're special so just to recap, when I bought this thing not running right as my friend Bob pulled it off the trailer out of this guy's garage, he was the original owner, uh, got it up to the Car Wizards, we got it running with a new fuel pump, and uh, he cleaned out the injectors, but that was just the beginning. It needed, it needed a lot more work. That first round of repairs was $1,300 to clean the injectors, replace the fuel pump, which was a lot of work to replace the fuel pump. You had to get to, to so many things, but then being a car that sat forever, there's a lot of things that will start to leak. The, transmission pan, the engine oil pan, the front crank seal, uh, the water pump was leaking. All of that needed to be refreshed. And then on top of that, things like the air conditioning didn't work, a window, it, it froze and, and quit working. And the tires, despite my best efforts to round them back out with a lot of burnouts, they were, they were, they were squares, they were ancient, and they were flat spotted and gone flat in the garage. So in total, I spent almost $4,000 sorting out this 93 Z28 Camaro, which also happens to be the average value of a decent Z28 Camaro. Certainly one not as nice as this, but uh, still a lot of money. But personally, I think it's worth it, especially since I have sponsors to help pay for the bill. I'd like to thank Keeps for sponsoring today's video, which has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. With Keeps, it's easier and more affordable to get treatment for your hair loss and keep the hair you have. What used to be a doctor's office visit for a hair loss prescription is now as easy as visiting a doctor online with Keeps and getting your medication delivered directly to your door. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the age of 35, so early prevention is key, as the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you could save. Keeps offers scientifically proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss. You don't have to go broke to avoid going bald either, as Keeps offers generic versions of popular FDA-approved hair loss treatments, some of which you may have tried before, but never at this price. 66% of men will experience hair regrowth with Keeps treatment, so if you're ready to prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash Hoovies or click the link in the description below and receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Hoovies. Now, let's get back to this beautiful fourth gen. Ooh. Like I said earlier, when I was in high school, this Camaro was the car to have in the early to mid 2000s. It looked great. It was pretty fast with the LT1 V8, and it was pretty used by that point, almost 10 years old, so they were plentiful and cheap. A lot of kids I knew in high school had this car, and I was super jealous. But nowadays, when you compare performance, it, it really isn't that great. Neither is the quality. The five and a half seconds zero to 60 with 275 horsepower is pretty much laughable nowadays. There's Kias and Hyundais that could do circles around this thing and the quality, well, you know, the interior, it's all that plastic, fantastic GM period of the 90s where it looks like they got their dashboards from Fisher Price, the toy makers, like my, my daughter's Barbie Jeep. Not that good, really primitive. And most importantly, what everybody seems to be concerned about these days, how good the infotainment system is, how much can the instrument cluster do, how many TV screens does it have? This has none of it. It is super primitive. It is three or four big needles and knobs, very plasticky. It has no technology in it whatsoever other than what, what little makes it run. So if you put this fourth gen Camaro next to the newest Camaro in comparison, this thing looks like complete junk, at least on paper. But people still love these things to death for whatever reason. I didn't understand it myself until I got this thing back and have been driving it for a couple of weeks. And now I realize how special this car is. I really think this Camaro is the perfect blend between 
old and new, and for me to explain, we'll have to start at the beginning. After 1971, no Camaro really matched the performance of the original 1969 and 1971 Camaro SS as they all went backwards because of emissions restrictions, insurance rates issues, and just the bean counters that GM kept cheapening and cheapening their cars. If you look back at Camaros after 1971 and before this, none could match that early golden era of muscle car Camaros in performance. Even the venerable IROC car of the late 80s and early 90s was like a second slower than a 1971 Camaro SS. But that all changed in 1993 when this Z28 Camaro came out. It had a five and a half second zero to 60. So this Camaro here really is the first to beat to best the original and they started completely with a fresh clean sheet of paper. The 90s was a great time for automotive design in my opinion because automakers were willing to take risks with their design. They were willing to look towards the future just like in the 50s and 60s and really take a chance on something that looked like a fire jet or a spaceship. And in this case, this is what the future looked like in 1993. And I don't know about you, but the shape of this car just screams F-14 Top Gun Tomcat to me, especially since they decided to paint the roof black to match the swooping dark glass of the cockpit. It has a spoiler in the rear that kind of looks like a subdued fighter jet's tail, and the front, the recessed headlights, which I think look much better than the later catfish looking ones that melt into the body. They look like inlets for a fighter jet's jets. Also, look how strange these front fenders are, how they have the extra little hump that makes an aerodynamic little pocket into this really aerodynamic looking mirror, once again, fighter jet. So this design is different, it's cool, it's, it's rad, it's futuristic, and it certainly helps in a lot of other ways being this aerodynamic. If you bought the Camaro in the 3.8 liter V6 version, you could get over 30 miles per gallon. And in this Z28, it meant the top speed, with the help of aerodynamics, was almost 160 miles per hour. That, that's really impressive. Truly, this was a car for everybody, but they kept it in production for a long time, too long, 1993 to 2002, when they finally ceased production. And they decided not to replace the Camaro for a long time until they saw the success of Ford Mustang and the Dodge Challenger with that retro modern look. And they did that same treatment with the new 2010 Camaro. And in my opinion, it was very uninspired. It's kind of like nowadays how every single movie is a remake or based on something or a book. There's really nothing original right now. And that Camaro, it just, it just wasn't special. It's almost like automakers are too scared to take styling risks anymore. They don't want people to go, oh, it's so different, it's ugly, I don't like it. And so they stay with these safe, either retro or just, just kind of boring designs and they aren't, they aren't looking ahead anymore like this Camaro. <laughs> So really, when you think about it, this Camaro is the most modern Camaro huh, that they really ever made. The fifth and sixth generation Camaros are retro throwbacks. And in a lot of ways, this Camaro is way more practical than the newer ones. The visibility is way better than the newer Camaros that are trying to be like old Camaros. And they have, they have big blind spots in a cramped, small windowed cabin. This thing is an open cockpit like a fighter jet. I can't even see the hood because it swoops down in such a way that it feels like I'm in an aircraft. And these big windows, like I said, have excellent visibility. Now, even though this one's kind of a base model Z28, it's cloth seats, no T-tops, which would make it even more of a cockpit feel, it still feels really special. Gets up and goes, too. I'm pretty surprised. makes a great noise too, the Flowmaster on this LT1 V8. It, it, it sounds old, but then I feel like I'm in a, a modern cockpit of like a fighter jet until I look down at all the all the plastics and the, the 90s GMness. but it's pretty easy to ignore. And this car has frame sniffers too, which makes the handling not bad. I'm actually kind of impressed considering how big this thing is. Still, performance-wise, nowhere close to a modern Camaro, but I can flog this thing on the road and get to a speed that's not gonna have me in deep trouble. I can have a lot of fun at legal speeds, and if I break it, well, I could probably fix it myself, and every parts store in town has pretty much everything you need sitting on the shelf for this Camaro, and it's, it's easy to fix, unlike the newer stuff with all the computers and everything else. This is just a simple, bare-bones vehicle, and it's the last of that, really. 
this is the last of, of simplicity. The other thing that this car has that modern Camaros don't is comfort. General Motors, they weren't skipping out on cushioning, on foam in the 1990s yet. They weren't making them rock hard racing seats. And same with the suspension, it's pretty soft and pliable and comfortable to where this car actually has a pretty nice ride. Nowadays, in order to make big old boats, the Camaros and the Mustangs and the Challengers more performance oriented, they have to siphon them up quite a bit and you lose a lot of the drivability and comfort. So this is a car that doesn't beat you up. It's really practical. It's kind of a hatchback. The seats fold down so you can haul a lot of stuff. The visibility is great and it's fun, but most importantly, it's special. In the times we live in today, it's nice to drive a car like this, a car that was designed looking towards the future with optimism during one of the most prosperous periods in American history. So it just, it just feels special to drive. With newer Camaros, it's like they're looking backwards in order to capture that magic, like the best times are behind us. So we're gonna go look backwards and go retro with our styling, even though performance wise, it's amazing what they've been able to do with a pushrod V8 engine and all the technology they've been able to throw into basically the same concept, but it, it's, it's just not the same. The reason Chevy thinks that the newest, latest Camaro doesn't sell nearly as well as this old last generation is because everybody wants crossovers, they want SUVs, they want trucks, but I don't think that's the case. I think, I think they just didn't capture the heartbeat of America with their latest version. They just, they just copied and pasted the old heartbeat of America and really, they really didn't use much imagination. At least that's my opinion. Thank you for watching.